All right guys, 19.4 is here and we have now seen what the workout is. The workout is as follows, which I'm sure a lot of you have referenced already online, but it is essentially a 12 minute cap of two couplets. The first couplet's going to be snatches and bar facing burpees. It's 10 barbell snatches at 95 pounds for the men, 65 for the ladies, then 12 bar facing burpees. You literally com complete that work as fast as possible and then you're forced, which means you absolutely must take a three minute rest. So from the time you finish that last burpee, um, you get three minutes until you're allowed to start on the bar muscle up. So the next couplet is bar muscle ups for 10 repetitions and then 12 bar facing burpees again. So that movement's gonna continue to be a staple. And this is three rounds and the workout is for time. So because there's that 12 minute time cap, something that you guys need to be aware of right out of the gate is that if you don't finish the work, which means the majority of us out there in the community doing this workout, which what will happen, uh, that first tie break score, your tie break score is gonna be the time or the split that you achieve in that first couplet. So that means when you finish that last bar facing burpee in your third round, you need to look at the score and know what that time is and you want that time to be as fast as possible. So that's the workout, that's the scenario that's set. I love this workout personally. Um, before I get too ahead of myself, you guys will notice, it's just me alone here tonight, uh, no Nick Fowler, but we keep our lines of communication really clear and very open, so anything that I'm conveying to you from a source of information, you can trust that Nick has had a say in it as well, um, and he himself is gonna be the mastermind behind the warm-up that's gonna prepare you guys uh, to have great success in this open workout uh, throughout the weekend and maybe even into next Monday. But my thoughts overall, um, I love the co combination of movements that we're seeing. I love this as another piece of the puzzle of the test. So what we noticed in the first weeks, uh, the first three weeks is that we were below parallel quite a bit, right? We had the wall balls, we had the rowing, uh, kind of like a lower body dominant, definitely breather dominant uh, type workout. And then into week two, uh, we had an opportunity to retest some things and revisit uh, you know, old scores uh, as, as, as a repeat of 16.2, but we, we squatted again. So we had squat cleans there with toes to bar. Of course, the skill set was in the double unders. Um, not a lot of rest built in there, but you had the opportunity to pace accordingly just to make that next time break into the next one. So and we also got a little bit heavy. And then in week three, we bring out the handstand walk and the strict handstand push-ups. But yet again, we're below parallel in the position of the lunges and the step up. So this week, we were kind of like, we're chipping away the list. We kind of know what to expect. We got the barbell snatch from a power perspective where we're staying above parallel. It's gonna be a lot of pulling off the floor and then we're gonna get uh, down and dirty with the bar facing burpee where speed and footwork is going to be a very important thing. And then the second part of this workout with those bar muscle ups, I think this is a really important part for you as an athlete to understand your personal capacity. Know that if you're gonna complete this entire workout, you're gonna do 30 of them and how you need to break them up with respect to the fact that the only break you get from that bar or that rig is going to be to do 12 bar facing burpees. So let's start in the most simple place and that's in regards to preparation. I think to give yourself the best successful opportunity to do this workout well is that you have to get moving and you have to get out of breath. Um, through your warm up, of course you wanna hit the major muscle groups. You're gonna to need to prepare your shoulders. Um, you're gonna to need to prepare your hamstrings and your low back because there's going to be a ton of flexion and extension um, universally throughout this, even in the burpee, right? Even in the bar muscle up and especially in that, in that bar snatch. Um, so I would take some time, maybe do a lot of inchworms, do a lot of hinging, uh, stretching of the hamstrings, uh, maybe you hop on the GHD and do some hip extensions. Again, we'll have a guided warm up that will pop up here somewhere on the screen uh, that's gonna kind of walk you guys through that. But I still believe that one of the most important factors is gonna be to prime your aerobic slash anaerobic system. And you're gonna do that by either doing surges on a bike or surges on a rower, uh, a way for you to elevate your heart rate and get out of breath because what you don't wanna do is have that first three rounds of this workout to be where the suffering is first going to hit you. Now, this might look like 10 minutes before you set the stage to actually do the workout that you go through this mini, um, for, for lack of a better term, I, call, I like to call it breaking the seal or a seal breaker type workout where you might be mirroring some of the patterns that are gonna take place. Maybe we're hanging, maybe we're hinging, maybe we're doing something like a burpee without creating too much local muscle fatigue to those, to those groups that we'll be focusing on in the workout, but in order to kind of simulate it. Um, so again, you don't want to push it too far, but there's that fine line, which is why throughout the year we try to put a strong emphasis on teaching our brood athletes how to properly warm up so in this circumstance they know exactly how to prepare. Um, 
Outside of that, guys, we need to start to set ourselves up for success when it comes to equipment. And with this one, I think gymnastics grips are gonna be the best way to go. I think that if you've been training with them for a long time, you're gonna understand what set you need to use. Um, I would encourage most of you guys to have two sets available because we all know that they tear from time to time. Um, and the last thing that you wanna do is have a clean, thorough run taking place and then all of a sudden the gymnastics grips pop and your hands are torn and you can't do uh, the final set of 10 or whatever that might run into. So have two pairs ready, make sure that you chalk them up prior to the workout and I say that because we don't want to spend a lot of dead time in this workout. One of these workout sets for time, if you guys are going to be one of those athletes that have the expectation to actually finish them, it's important for you to understand that every second truly counts and that could separate you from tens and hundreds of places. So to understand that we don't want to be standing around or kneeling down chalking our hands, which is often a trap that we see in, in competition setting. Um, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're prepared as much as you can. Now the opposite side of preparation for gripping the bar would be to tape them, and I'm still uh, assuming that this is an opportunity for you guys to do, but you can't use both the grips and the tape. I'm old school, I like to say the grips come first and I think it will allow you to successfully complete the workout without tearing your hands. <clears throat> When it comes to the barbell, you want that thing set up as close as you can to the rig. We definitely want, or I'm sorry, not the rig, but just basically an amount of space where you can drop immediately and do the burpees, right? Nothing that's gonna be an obstacle in your way. And clearly you guys need to make sure that you check out the standards for the camera setting. And if you're not having a judge, or you need to submit your score because you're hopefully gonna have one of the best times uh, out there. Um, you need to make sure that you're, you're meeting those standards. Uh, when it comes to my advice for executing this workout, clearly we're always gonna be having tiers. Um, and what that means is that you know there are people with higher capacities than others. You know some people are going to just have their goal of literally uh, meeting the expectation of finishing the first couplet in under nine minutes, right? Those those new to CrossFit. That's going to be a completely different game plan than what I'm going to go over tonight. Um, what I'm talking to is you competitive athletes that have the goal to finish the workout and or get as close as possible, meaning that you'll be through that first couplet. You'll be giving it all you got to go and broken on the barbell, you'll be smoking through the burpees, and you'll be trusting your recovery in that three minute rest. So that's where I'm gonna start, is that I think you have to be willing to suffer through the first three rounds of this workout, these, these first 66 reps, it's really important for you to understand that yes, it's gonna involve some pain, and yes, your grip's gonna feel like it's blowing up, but how well have you prepared for this moment, and can you trust it in three minutes, then you can execute some bar muscle ups and some burpees. With that considered, the snatch is going to offer an interesting challenge for many of you. Um, because of the combination of movements, right, the power snatch where we're hinging, a lot of people get into more of a full forward folded position than they do with like a clean because their arms are wider, so our low back or hamstrings are going to get completely fatigued here. But also the burpee still tends to do that as we pop out of the bottom, especially if you guys are moving with haste with the kind of speed that we hope to see you moving with. So one thing that I would consider is to have some variations of the snatch ready for you. And hopefully you've been practicing them in the, school, the, the skill set of your tool belt. And what I mean by that is, of course, we've got the regular power snatch where we're boosting the bar off our hip. We're going to rebend the knees and lock out the arms at the top. But also we've got to consider the muscle snatch. Now is the muscle snatch something that you are going to want to consistently do through all three of these rounds? I'm not certain that that's the best way to go, especially if you're a longer limb athlete like myself, that's kind of slow uh, when we talk about top to bottom style movement and it can actually really really smoke uh, the posterior. And then we've also got the snake option where you approach it almost like it's a muscle snatch but as the bar passes your belly button and your sternum area you start to rebend your knees early and then you stand up as, as the bar reaches lockout. So to me this is going to be one of the best methodologies to try to put into practice. Now the caveat to that is if you've never done it before and this is going to be your first time trying it, I wouldn't just throw it into this workout. But for those of you that have experimented with it, I would try all three of these snatches in your warm up. In fact, I would be prepared to maybe use a different style snatch uh, in the last 10 reps of the workout just because of what one simple continuous movement can do to a local muscle group. So switching it up might be your way to keep moving with speed and then get you onto that last set of burpees. When it comes to the burpees, both in the first couplet and the second couplet, it's extremely important for you to get your footwork down and have a steady mantra of how you're gonna execute these things. You're gonna be suffering, you're gonna be tired, you're gonna to start to rationalize reasons to slow down and change up your rhythm. Don't, continue to have something. So if your chest makes contact first every time and you're kind of worming out of the bottom, continue to do that. Make the decision if you're jumping both feet to the bar with a small step and a pivot, continue to do that. Or if maybe it's a burpee with a long step and then you're turning in the air, 
The goal is to have something already set in your mind as a game plan so that you can fall back to it when the going really gets tough because we're all going to run into that wall at some point and those that can hold true to the intentions at the beginning of the workout, those are the ones that are going to be dying for the seconds at the, at the end to actually finish this workout uh, with a qualifying and or a, a competitive style time. Um, as we carry into the rest, the rest is important. What are you doing with yourself during these three minutes? One, I would say get comfortable. It's not long, right? The big thing is that you wanna be taking in as much oxygen as possible. So, you know, you'll hear some people out there talking about breathe through your nose, have control. No, get your body as much oxygen as you can in a relaxed state. So what that means is I do want you breathing through your nose and your mouth at the same time, inhaling as deeply as possible and really flushing your body as much as you can. Have a seat, relax. As you start to gain more composure, I want you to start to work on your forearms. I want you to be stretching them out, opening your grip, moving your hands, making sure that we don't feel like we're just com com completely cutting off the blood supply there because it's gonna be extremely important as we start to hang from the rig. Um, and then if you really feeling good and you got this time window, maybe even hop up on the rig and do a swing or two. Right, you're gonna prepare yourself to execute that first set of bar muscle ups early. As we segue out of the rest, it's really important for you guys to have a game plan on how these 30 bar muscle ups are gonna be executed. Um, I think that for the most part, you're only going to get a brief break from the bar. 12 bar facing burpees are going to take roughly around 30 seconds for a lot of people, and then they're going to be getting back. Now, if you need to slow down, that's something that you need to consider. Uh, because if you just hurry through the burpees to go stand at the bar, that doesn't really do you a lot of justice and you're digging yourself into more of that anaerobic deficit that we've spoken on uh, the weeks before. And we, it seems to be that the athlete that can sustain that aerobic style pace and move more consistently throughout the workout is the one that has the most success. So what I'm going to say about these bar muscle ups, guys, is that you got to meet yourself where you're at. Um, I'll instruct a lot of my athletes, yes, it's okay to start with a bigger set, but if you feel like 10 is towards your upwards limit at this stage of fatigue, you need to scale back, even if it's to do seven and three, or even if it's to do five and five or six and four, you gotta have a little bit of a game plan and then be ready to change it when you guys get into round two and three. What we saw, what we've seen from the athletes that have already done the competition, first of all, I would definitely encourage you to go watch because this is such a short, fast workout that you can learn a lot from watching someone else suffer through that. If you're getting down to singles, if you're getting down to doubles and you're an athlete with a much higher capacity, you guys are gonna be frustrated with yourself, you're gonna wanna repeat the workout. And I hate to see athletes go out on that first attempt and have this potential to do really great, but then they're biting off a little bit more than they can chew and then they've gotta come back in a couple days and hit it again. So. I think you got to meet yourself where you're at and you obviously need to be sticking to some kind of game plan early in workout one and in that second half of this workout, you've got to be willing to adapt on the fly. When it comes to repeatability, I think there are a few things to consider. One is literal soreness. Um, the speed of this workout might cause you guys to feel it in the hamstrings and the low back. I think your shoulders will hold up for the most part, but those are the two muscle groups that I'm going to be concerned with the most. You definitely probably need about a 24 hour window before you take another stab at this one. Um, so set yourself up for success, hit it early, give yourself an opportunity to redo it. And also think about your lats, these 30 bar muscle ups, especially if you're going to finish them and finish them uh, in, a, in a pretty decent and competitive time. Uh, those contractions are happening uh, fast. Um, and so if it's something that you can actually execute and feel good about, you need to just set yourself up for a successful recovery protocol to give yourself an opportunity to repeat it down the road. I know that Active Life gives a great go-to workout that's gonna help you kind of wind down and cool down, potentially even the day after, so that on that second day, you're feeling more uh, reinvigorated and ready and in a better place physically to actually execute. Um, one thing that I wanted to, to also mention is the style of bar muscle up and I think that we'll definitely be offering you guys up some footage but there's a style of that glide kip where you can still avoid getting your toes above the bar and it's going to be extremely important. Uh, think about where you're going to jump to grab the bar. Athletes standing a little bit behind tend to get that center of gravity traveling in front as we swing and it's going to give you better momentum to kip up. We've seen a lot of people get their first bar muscle up by training like this and executing this style of a muscle up um, and certainly for the majority of the population it's going to give you the most efficient kip to get over the rig and be able to do it time and time again even under fatigue. So 19.4 crew I'm a huge fan of. I'm excited to watch some of the scores and see how this unfolds. I think it's another great workout to shake up some of the standings that we've seen. Uh, I believe that we've got workout one and workout two that are kind of in one category and then we've got workout three and workout four that are kind of in another category which leaves us with the assumption of what's to come in 19.5 and I think we all have a couple guesses that we could probably throw out in the air but nonetheless best of luck on 19.4 I hope you guys execute and meet all of your expectations but if you don't just give it another try